Hello everybody and happy new year and we start off right with a banger. I mean 3D audio is now a thing on YouTube I guess called Eclipsa Audio which used to be immersive audio model and format. So it didn't just get a new fancy name I guess but it also is now official. It's a thing I already discussed like half a year ago at uh, the Hi-Fi podcast so you want to check out the German version uh, in the video description but if you don't speak German don't worry because I do you have three pros and three cons for this Eclipsa audio, whatever this is. So make sure you subscribe because this won't be the last video on this topic. And this is just like a quick video. I don't want to just announce that, hey, there's this new format that nobody really knows anything about it because CES is running right now. And uh, But I do already have some information because I already got my hands on uh, uh, the technology with my blog posts I did. So you could also look at the description below. And yeah, let's start right into it. Like, what's the first pro? Well, it's 3D audio. I mean, I'm the biggest enthusiast, but also a big critique. So not everything is good. That's just really audio. But I would say it's a great statement that YouTube says, or Google if you wish, that we know spatial audio, immersive audio, however you want to call it, is a thing and we want to promote it and we want to make it a part of our platform. So this is great. And the big um, competitor here would have been Dolby Atmos, obviously. You could also name MPEG H. Uh, DTSX or Oro 3D if you wish, if you are uh, that kind of person, that's all right. Um, but yeah, it's that would have been the competition. And as you probably know, there'll be Atmos. Um, it's, it's kind of expensive to license that for a platform. I know it's a thing for films and that's perfectly fine. But for something like social media, like those quick type of videos, I guess it would have been unpayable for YouTube, even for YouTube or even for Google to license every video for the be Atmos. So I guess this is why this Open Media Alliance, which is actually behind this whole thing, it's maybe not just Google as far as I know and not just Samsung, but uh, those are the two main players that are always mentioned here. And they thought of something, okay, we need a format that somehow enables 3D audio for mass audience. And it's interesting because Netflix did something similar, but on their platform, um, you can check it out also on my on my homepage, which is this Netflix Ambeo 2 channel file, where they tried to enable uh, every device basically with uh, just two channels of, of sound and making it somehow more immersive. But this is not the case here. They re really want to go full into multi-channel audio, as I supposed. So um, long story short, that's a big um, pro. I'm really happy about this announcement. It will enable so much more possibilities because after nearly a decade of me doing this like 3D audio, it's still hard sometimes to distribute your stuff. Like you really have to know which player supports this or what channel order do I have to use. And I hope that with this Eclipsa audio, it will now get more accessible, which gets me to point number two, which is the flexibility of the format. I mean, this video is too short to really go hardcore into, oh, what does it even support? But for example, it can do third order MV Sonics combined with a two channel stereo file, which is really cool because this is what you need for like 360 videos where you have a spatial um, ambience, for example, combined with a head locked uh, stereo, for example, that doesn't rotate with the head tracking, which is really crucial. And um, yeah, so there are a lot of possibilities and combinations. And as I mentioned, but Dolby is the competition. Think again, because now what you can do is actually use a Dolby Atmos file, um, uh, transcode it into, for example, a 7.1.4 file. So you make it a channel file and then you can put it into the container of Eclipse Audio and upload it on YouTube. So you can't really upload a Dolby Atmos master file as far as I know, or like an ADM or something, but you can still make um, yeah, make it a channel file and put it on YouTube. Or now you can use your higher order MB Sonics files and somehow max it into a uh, video and uh, upload it on YouTube. So the format seems to be very flexible. This is also like a downside. I'm not really sure. It's just like object-based audio. I don't think so. Like I haven't really seen the tools yet, but um, yeah, stand by with me. I will definitely let you know about this. But 
as I already mentioned, now here comes the the third Pro 360 videos. I'm still a huge fan of that. This is like what I do most of the time uh, with my business, basically still doing this. And I mean, there was a huge hype eight years ago where uh, YouTube decided that they want to make MB Sonics at least first order the the standard, so you could upload 360 videos and embed a four channel file which was then uploaded to youtube so you can <laughs> look it up at my homepage. there are multiple videos where you watch the video and you do the head tracking or simulate the head tracking with the mouse movement and you would have spatial audio which is great and it's still a thing but a lot of things happened in the last years for example this facebook 360 workstation which was like the goal to tool to even mix spatial audio and also to distribute it somehow wasn't continued and it is now uh, only supported on like older systems there is like a weird workaround to make it work on silicon laptops i know another tool like um, noisemakers they didn't update that tool so you can't really use their plugins i mean there are newer plugins coming in so mixing ambisonics audio i would say is not difficult but distributing ambisonics audio is really difficult you would need, I don't know, maybe a game engine or as we had YouTube 360 or Facebook 360. But those platforms really didn't really care anymore about um, MB Sonic's audio, I guess. And yeah, I think it's still difficult to even upload the files or some of the videos are not working anymore or there's like a new browser update. So it still feels like, I don't know, eight years ago where we were testing, oh, does it work? And it does not. So I feel like with this Eclipse audio, you would have an update even on the 360 videos. I don't, this is not a confirmed information. This is just my guess of uh, YouTube now supporting higher order MB Sonics. And maybe you can make use of that in the combination of 360 videos. But we definitely need tools to have a video and um, like a 360 video and spatial audio and put everything together because doing that with. I don't know, Premiere Pro is really a pain and you can't really be sure um, if it's working. This is why I'm still a fan of FFmpeg. Comment below if you like XFmpeg. <laughs> I heard you have to do some like call of call to actions and I definitely won't edit this video. It just goes straight to YouTube. Bear with me. And I try to practice my English, which hopefully works for you guys. Anyway, so let's go to the three things where I feel like mm, those are cons of the format. So first thing is pretty obvious. It's a new format. Yay. And they just named like five other 3D audio formats in this video. And those aren't even all the formats that are available out there. So uh, another player, another format. I'm not sure if that's really what we need right now. And I also feel like it doesn't it doesn't have it all. I always feel like there should be a format where you can mix everything, uh, which Dolby claims to be, but they don't have some things that I would like to have in my mixing workflow, which is like um, separating head tracked audio to head locked audio. I mean, you can technically do that in the Dolby Atmos uh, in Dolby Production Suite, but you, I'm not aware of any renderer that allows for that. Everything suddenly becomes spatial, which is the reason why you have to look at my other video where I comment on how this is crucial for we are that you just need something different, different tools for VR. You can't just use Ambisonics for everything and a combination of it. And for me, those three things are object-based uh, audio, like you can have ob audio objects, you can have a bed, ideally Ambisonics, but could be something else. And then the third thing is uh, you have some sort of channel layout, like a bed, um, or like a headlocked file that just stays, however, um, and independent to where you are looking at. And you can make sure that this file always gets played back normally and there's no additional rendering on this, which is currently not the case, for example, with how head tracked audio is distributed on, I don't know, Apple Music, for example. And um, yeah, there are so many different and uh, other thoughts on what you would need. Maybe this makes up for another good video, like the ideal tool. And I feel like this immersive audio model for and format or Eclipse audio is not really the in Germany, we say Eierlegende Wollmichsauf, <laughs> which basically means it's a tool to rule them all. So I don't think that EMF is this tool, but I guess for YouTube as a platform, this could still work out. But you shouldn't think of this new format 
as a format. I would think of it as a container. It's more like, hey, you have Ambisonics audio, or hey, you have your Dolby Atmos, or maybe you even have, I don't know, MPEG-H, whatever you, you mixed your spatial audio with. And now you somehow have a way to put it into the container of Eclipsa as form of Ambisonics or as the form of channel-based audio, and even combine it with headlocked audio and put it on YouTube. And I think thinking of it that way, it's a, it, it makes sense to make it a new container and not just use what is already out there maybe and you still have the flexibility. Then the second thing where I'm really skeptical if this Eclipsa audio will catch up. I mean, it's Google, it's Samsung now um, implementing this into soundbars even. But um, yeah, I don't see content creators on YouTube now suddenly mixing immersive audio. Let's just, <laughs> it's just how it is. I don't see any person who does, I don't know, makeup tutorials suddenly record in Ambisonics audio or even Dolby Atmos. There's like a very small percentage of those content creators that would be willing to invest probably more money for the hardware and the software and also the time that goes into creating such a video. So it all comes to this hen egg problem where there is hardly any content. As of right now, there is content uh, in the form of Emisonics, which is spatial audio on YouTube already, but combined with 360 videos. So that's not what you would want to watch on a TV, for example. And the other thing is that YouTube allowed uploading of at least 5.1 sound for over a decade now. I remember you can upload like yeah, a 5.1 uh, MP MP4 for example, but it would just play back. I think just the first two channels, or it would down mix the file for you and make it a, a stereo file. But I feel like the information is already on the platform, so you have this scam of all. <laughs> if you type in 5.1 surround on on YouTube, we will you will find dozens and hundreds of videos which claim to be 5.1, and they probably have been 5.1, but they don't play back as 5.1 <laughs> on YouTube, which is the whole point of it. But there were some changes uh, in the last years that you could somehow even access it uh, with a with a YouTube uh, app on a TV, like a smart TV, for example. So there were some changes. So some content is already there that's not necessarily the type of content creator uh, content that uh, you would expect on YouTube but yeah I'm skeptical if there is even a high enough demand so I think it's on us as yeah, like audio engineers to do good stuff which gets me to the third and last point where why I think this will fail and as you know now you need new tools or you use the tools that you have and somehow uh, decode it uh, to the format that's needed for the upload. But how should people know what works with spatial audio? Just because something is spatial audio doesn't make it better. And I feel like most of the time content in stereo, if it's mixed decent, it's perfectly fine. Like what's, what's the point of panning around objects just because you can? And you have to, um, distinguish between like the Dolby Atmos content that's in films where like a helicopter flies by, you know the cliche, and it feels a bit more like you're in a, in a film. But my perspective is that those films still would have worked in stereo or even in mono. Obviously, it was spatial audio. It's better, it feels nicer, but it's also professionally mixed and <laughs> they have huge budget and also the time and money to invest into the film to make it good. But I don't see this happen in uh, like in this YouTube bubble where people would need to understand like what works with spatial audio and what does not work. And I would always prefer a good stereo mix to a bad immersive audio mix. And this is like my biggest fear for this whole thing that suddenly there is this uh, Eclipsa label on YouTube or something and you would think, oh, this is great because it's Ex Eclipsa. But if the content is just not good, even Eclipsa will sound bad. And how can you make yeah, progress here is yeah, you have to build an expertise, which is what I try to be doing uh, during the last years. But I've never tried Eclipsa. Let's see how it works out. Like what are the strengths and weaknesses? So this is my uh, yeah, biggest fear that people will just do something 
uh, with immersive audio, but it won't be good. And it's not a quality label of, hey, this is great, which is basically what Dolby Atmos tried to be uh, in the last decades, that you see Dolby Atmos and think, hey, this is good. This is quality content. Um, so yeah, wrapping it, it up, um, what, what's, what's my conclusion? Uh, I think it's all in all, Great news. I'm really excited to it. I'm so excited. I'm even doing a video. <laughs> so um, th this is cool. I'm really looking forward to, to getting my hands on it. So as mentioned, make sure you subscribe because I definitely will do some uh, testing with it and maybe do, I don't know, use my own content and now put it on YouTube to, in Eclipse. Oh, what a time to be alive. But also I'm very skeptical if this will catch on. And I know that there are not many people working on this thing. There's like, I feel like a handful of people uh, trying to make it work, even with thinking, oh, this is Google. They have so much manpower, so many people behind it. But I don't think that's the reality. So there's like a, a lot of, uh, like a few enthusiasts just like me who try to make immersive audio thing. And I just wish them the best of luck. Um, and yeah, I guess time will tell if this is going to be a success or it will fall down just like 360 years where there was this uh, decline during the last years. So that's my opinion. I'm looking forward to uh, learn about your opinion. What do you think? Are you excited? What will you do with it? Let me know, write it in the comments below and I see you, I don't know, in the next week. I try to do this regularly. Hope you enjoy it and let me know what you want to watch. Until then, bye-bye.